Hello, I'm showing you how I set up a 4X RAID 0 on my 2008 Mac Pro. So let me step over here. Um, here is the Mac Pro itself, as you can tell. And I have the four hard drives. They're both, or they're all 4, 500 gigabyte, uh, 7200 RPM, 32 megabit cache, uh, SATA 3 gig per second hard drives. Um, since the uh, Mac Pro, any of them don't support SATA 3. Probably the new one, the next one released, will. But uh, even the 2010 model does not. Um, but it's really not a problem. This is still really fast, as you'll see at the end of this video. So um, what I did is when I was installing Snow Leopard, I, uh, I chose a 4X RAID 0, and I should, you have the option of mirrored or stripped. And I chose mirrored because I want to do a RAID 0. Uh, I'm sorry, I chose a stripped because I want to do RAID 0. If you're going to do a mirrored, that would be a RAID 5, and that's for better uh, uh, data protection, not performance. Stripped is for performance. And I chose the block size as 128K because I will do, be doing video editing on this machine. And 128K block size is best for video editing. So the hard drives in here, let's pull them out. It is a Seagate Barracuda 500 gigabyte. Uh, hard drive and it has the Apple branding because it is the hard drive that's shipped with this machine. Now I bought this Mac Pro used and these three hard drives are the drives that came with the machine um, and I put my own in and so even if uh, even if because RAID, uh, RAID 0 really isn't meant for data reliability its failure rate is the highest out of any other kind of RAID um, so, and it's really bad because I, um, I'm using this RAID 0 setup as my boot drive. So my operating system is loaded on these four drives. And uh, I, I could care less about that, you know. I backed my data up anyways. And even if these drives did fail or one of them went out and I lost all my data because they're shared across all these four hard drives, I would not have a problem replacing any of these hard drives because... For one, these three hard drives don't have any value to me because they came with the machine that I bought um, just not that long ago. So I would rather replace these with all two terabytes anyways if I had the option to, but I'm not going to waste good drives. So um, I'm just using leaving these right now. And I have two terabytes of combined storage with this RAID 0 setup. And uh, that's about it for the looking at the hard drive part. There's really nothing special to it just uh, software which is really easy all you do is and that's the disk utility when you're loading the operating system you choose one of your hard drives go to the RAID tab and you select the stripped the block size you want and you drag all your hard drives so I drag each one of these four hard drives into a window into a uh, it, it's a it just tells you what four hard drives are going to do the RAID in and you hit you title it and you hit go and it makes a RAID for you, and then you can select the these hard drives, all, all four of them together, whatever you called it. I called my Macintosh HD, and uh, it sees it as one single hard drive, and that hard drive being two terabytes of space. So it's real simple, uh, nothing complicated, and I did do a software RAID. I did not do a hardware RAID. So a couple of things I could mention are that um, if you're really not f familiar to doing a RAID, sorry, a RAID setup anyways, is that, uh, as I said before, I did a software RAID, and there is a thing called a hardware RAID, and there is a software RAID. A software RAID has a higher failure rate than a hardware RAID does, and now what a hardware RAID means is that if you had a Mac Pro, say, you could get a Apple RAID, or a Mac Pro RAID card, whatever they call them, um, it goes in one of your PCI Express slots, and it is a controller board that tells these hard drives to do a, a hardware RAID, which this the board has a backup battery on it, and so it has a certain amount of storage that it can keep on the board itself for if one of the hard drives were to fail, that you could slip a new one in, kind of like RAID 5, and your, your data could go back onto this one drive and you'd be okay. But that is only with a hardware RAID. A software RAID, if one of your drives were to go out, this a good portion of your data or bits of your data um, would be not there anymore. Like if you were to load a photo, half your photo could be gone or corrupted. Um, and that, that's if you're doing a, a 
a software rate. So that's the only real difference between the software and hardware. Okay, so now I'm showing you the Blackmagic Designs disk speed test and how it performs or what kind of numbers it gives me running my 4x RAID 0 setup. So I am running Lion 10.7 right now on my Mac Pro. It's a 2008 model, uh, 8 core. But uh, anyways, so here is the application itself. You have your gauge for writing and you have your gauge for reading and it will display your hard drive's speed in these numbers right here. So uh, down here we have this thing that said will it work and what this is saying is that all these formats right here there will be either a green check or a uh, X and if you have a green check and let's say it's at the 2k file that means that if it had a green check right here and right here you could read and write 10 bit YUV 422 files in real time in 2k on your computer and if you had a check next to let's say the 720p at a 60 frames a second that means you could write and read 720p files in 10 bit YUV 422 uh, codex in real time and then on the other side right here we have where it says how fast so it's saying in 10 bit YUV 422 files at 720p how fast can you write it and you'll display numbers right here in megabits per second so let's start the speed test and see how fast my 4x RAID 0 cluster is uh, what it's rating or how fast it's getting so let's start now so the average for the write is about 280 it's peaking about 288 right now but the next time around it will go to 280 the average for read is probably about 240 and we're back here and see it's back at 280 so you know you could average just about 275 280 for the right and let's go one more time and you could probably average about 240 for the read and we'll stop this test so and now let's go over the results and as you can see down here with my setup you can I could read and write 10 bit YUV 422 files in 2k in real time but I could not read and write 12 bit RGB 444 files in 2k in real time but in a lot of computers cannot do that because that is a very demanding codec and most consumer cameras or most consumers will never need or get their hands on a camera of that quality uh, you probably won't have ever used 10 bit YUV 422 files either um, and now let's go over to the other window here and let's look at 10 bit YV422 uh, files and let's see how fast my system could read and write those those codecs so we have a 2k file and my machine could write that codec at 34 megabits per second and it could read it at 29 if we were to go down to 12 bit my system could read and write 2k files um, in f at 15 megabits per second for the write and 12 megabits per second for the read so those are very respectable numbers. Um, you, uh, if you, if you want to do this yourself, um, on like a Mac or a PC, there's a couple things you could do. Uh, if you have a Mac, you you probably you can't really do it on an iMac, um, except for the newer ones with the multiple hard drive bays, and you can kind of do it on a MacBook Pro if you have the dual drive and your standard hard drive installed. And you can do it on the new Mac Minis because it has two uh, two and a half inch drive areas, so you can put two hard drives in there. And um, so, if you have a Mac Pro, you're already probably doing a RAID setup or something close, like you have SSDs installed, something along those lines. But uh, if you have a Windows machine, your motherboard probably has four or more SATA ports on it, free SATA ports if you're already using two or whatever you're using um, you probably have multiple extras uh, and if you have a newer motherboard you most likely have SATA 6 gig gigabits per second and you probably have two or four of those and with SATA 6 gigabit per second it's twice the speed of SATA 2 which maxes out at 3 gigabits per second so your numbers right here would be even higher um, since you could use the full potential of a 64 megabit cache uh, hard drive um, and you could easily go on Amazon or some vendor 
and get like Western Digital 1.5 terabyte uh, hard drives for around 100 to 110 dollars. So all those together, by about 4:30 with tax and shipping probably, and you could have a even faster setup and more capacity RAID than this machine does. I have two terabytes of this fast storage, um, which is very cool. So th I I do like this more than an SSD because yes, an SSD would be pulling higher numbers depending on the SSD you have, but a decent like OCZ. Uh, Vertex, a SATA 3, you know, those pull about 500, but a SATA 2 OCZ Vertex, those pull about 280 and, or no, 300 and like 280, somewhere around that. So they're very close to this, but if you don't want to spend, you know, thousands of dollars or even hundreds of dollars um, on just one hard drive that's only about 100 to 240 gigs, uh, then this would be the way you want to go. You know, I have two terabytes of this all this speed. Um, a solid state drive only has about 120 gigs on the norm of even faster storage but yet again you have 120 gigs so that could be a big deciding factor on what you wanted to do for some people. You know some people don't have much data so SSD would be more reasonable for them but I do have a lot of data and I do like fast speeds so this seemed like the better way to go and um, this is actually, these numbers are higher than I thought they would originally be. I thought they are going to be lower, so I was very happy the first time I ran this test and saw that they was pushing about 280 and 240, which is, that's very respectable. So uh, that's it for my 4X RAID 0 in my 2008 Mac Pro. Thank you for watching my video. Goodbye.